Hello, and welcome to Breaking It All Down. I'm Count Zero. I'm doing a movie review this week, and, well, due to the fact that there's still a strike, a strike, but a, a claim on my last video, because I used footage of Jamie's Food Re Re Revolution to discuss Jamie's Food Revolution, I'm just going to talk about the movie I'm reviewing this time. Anywho, this week I'm talking about the film Sabotage, starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. Sabotage is an odd film, kind of an exemplar of all the odd choices, semi-odd choices, that Arnold has made since he's returned to being in movies after his gubernatorial slash political career. It's like much of the films have encapsulated Arnold's... It's not like the rest of the films in Arnold's career. I mean, Arnold does have a fairly broad filmography as it is in terms of action and comedy, whether you have wacky slapstick films like Jingle All the Way, um, films like Kindergarten Cop, or Twins, or even uh, Mr. Mom. I love Mr. Mom. Um, I wrote The one where Arnold's pregnant, which is... Could have been almost any actor, really, to a certain degree. Or, for that matter, action films like Commando or Predator. Um, this film is kind of closer to the oeuvre of the Coen brothers. Like, films like Blood Simple, where they're something of a neo-noir. Sabotage follows Bre the character nicknamed Breacher, is played by Arnold, who leads a strike team for the DEA. Um, the strike team is about as clean as the strike team from the show The Shield. They don't call them the strike team of the show, but I basically end up referring to them as the strike team for the entire movie. The movie follows the character of Breacher, played by Arnold, who leads a sort of SWAT assault team for the DEA. A team that's about as clean as the strike team from The Shield, in that they're just a touch dirtier than a gas station bathroom. During a raid on a cartel kingpin's money warehouse, the team steals $10 million of the cartel's money, blows up the rest, and then stashes the money for retrieval. When they come back to get the money, it's gone. They've been beaten to the punch. Additionally, the team gets investigated by the DEA, who somehow figures out that they stole some money, by the fact that the money in the warehouse got blown up. It's one of a few plot holes we get into. Um, and the team is basically put on suspension for several months until they're finally reinstated when the DEA can't find anything. And then things start going pear-shaped. Members start getting picked off one by one, and the film follows Breacher and a detective for the local police department who are trying to figure out who's gunning for the team and somehow to stop them. Because we know why they're being gunned for. The stolen money. But the question is who's doing it? Is it cartel hitmen? Or is it one of the members of the team who is seeking revenge for the stolen money, thinking the member of the team has taken it? Sabotage's biggest problem is it doesn't know quite how to transition from an action movie to a suspense thriller. The strike team's hyper-macho attitude remains in full effect throughout much of the movie. There is never a point where, as the thing, as things go bad, as the team getting picked off, where the team gets serious and gets professional, even when they're reacting to getting picked off one by one, it's still with this hyper macho bravado which doesn't fit here. It fit in Predator. But to a certain degree, part of the shtick with Predator is you go in with an action move, expecting an action move, and you get a slasher film, where it, the problem isn't betrayal, it's that you're being hunted, so the bravado kind of works to stick around. Here, here the difference is, 
it could be that the, the team's being hunted, or it could be the team is being betrayed. And because of the, the risk of betrayal, it this is kind of the point where you've got to quit with the bravado and get really serious. And Breacher's the only one who gets serious. Additionally, a lot of the cast, really the, the strike team, because of the bravado, remains fairly unlikable. It's like the 30 minutes with a jerks problem that, slash, that some slasher movies have, where the... Introductory moments where we establish the characters who will get picked off one by one exist to set up the characters are unlikable jerks. Specifically, so when the characters become unlikable, so that characters are getting killed, we don't feel too bad. Here, because the strike team is so dirty, so crooked, and because they respond to the deaths of their own with less of the gravitas than I feel it needs, their reaction, the reaction I as a viewer get to subsequent deaths of members of the team is less, is less, oh no, that character died, and more, oh, that was a, maybe, maybe, oh, that was a cool death, or oh, that was a gruesome death, that sort of thing. It's, it's not the reaction I think the film the filmmakers were trying to get, the writers were trying to get, which is kind of disappointing. But that said, the film does play with the audience, with the audience's expectations well. We, it sets up in the very, very beginning of the movie. This is going to be balls of the wall action movie, and even with the implication that the, that the cartel hitmen were coming in, this is going to be a case of. Oh, the team's gonna go on the run, they'll be running gunfights with the cartel hitman kind of thing. Cartel assassination team, death squad, whatever. What we get instead is a neo noir film which while the characters of the strike team aren't smartly written, the plot as a whole is smartly built, smartly structured. And the because this the film kind of were it not for these somewhat unlikable characters, would merit further viewing. Thus, Sabotage becomes a film that is smarter than, smarter than it is any right being, based on the fact that we're talking about an action movie starring Arnold as part of his sort of Expendables career rebirth. A rebirth built around playing off R as the audience's nostalgia for the 80s action movies that were all of it, that were his thing, 80s and 90s action films. We, it expects us to come in, get a big action movie, but we get something much slower, much cleverer. And because of that, I would say the movie at least merits one viewing if you're a fan of, if you're a fan of Arnold and want to see him doing something he's never done before, and doing it fairly well. Or if you're a fan of a sort of a neo noir film, if you're a fan of the sort of blood simple, um, Miller's Crossing style, uh, or a simple plan style noir things falling apart kind of thing. For that matter, from a tabletop gaming standpoint, this is a movie that if you play the game Fiasco, as featured on tabletop. This would be a movie that might be worth borrowing a scenario from, or borrowing the concept from, and maybe your group could execute it better, could third degree execute it on the plot framework, maybe a little better, or still create your own interesting tragedy, your own interesting fiasco around the plot of this movie. So, thank you very much for, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please support my Patreon, or there's a tip jar if you're watching this on the YouTube um, channel page, um, as well as a link to my Patreon page. The link is also in the show notes, and the URL is in the credits. Next time, who knows? Anime, the new game, cross the bridge would come to it. But I will see you then.